Hello physics students, this is Dr. Brenzi here and this is a video on 2D projectile motion when a projectile is launched at an arbitrary angle. So in our example here what you see is a cannonball being shot out of a cannon. This cannon, unlike the previous video, is now on level ground with where it will hit its target. The difference is now that we are not firing the projectile horizontally like we did yesterday, we're now firing it at an angle and either that angle will be given to you or we actually have to calculate that angle. The other thing that needs to be given to you in the problem is the speed of the projectile as it's being launched. Now this initial velocity is a vector and vectors have both a magnitude and a direction. So in your text one of the first things they told you to do is actually to split this vector up into components. And we're going to do that with the same process that we used for the horizontal projectile problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to first figure out what our givens are and in that process we're actually going to split up this vector into its components, its x and y components. Then we're going to figure out which equations we can apply to this particular problem. And then finally we're going to solve the problem. So the same process as yesterday. Or I should say in the previous video. Who knows when you actually watched the horizontal projectile motion problem. Okay, well let's get started with figuring out the given. So let's go ahead and create a chart that has x on one side, y on the other because we can treat these as two independent motions and let's start off with our unknowns in the x direction we don't know where its final position will be in the x direction that is actually what we're trying to figure out so question mark there its initial x position we're going to define that as zero its velocity just before impact into this, uh, I think it was a bale of hay, is unknown. We don't know what that is, so we're going to leave that blank. Its initial velocity in the x direction, however, we can figure out. And we're going to have to be able to figure that out by splitting this up into x and y components. So, this vector can be made out of a vector that points along horizontal this red vector here and a vector that points vertically so these two vector components added together horizontal plus vertical will give us the same vector so we're using the principles of vector addition in order to break this down into horizontal and vertical components well, we're interested right now in the horizontal component. So we have to use a little bit of trig. And the length of this vector, the magnitude of this vector, is 40. That's the hypotenuse of our triangle there. So let's use some trig, some SOHCAHTOA, to figure out, okay, what would this one be? Well, this is the adjacent side. Adjacent, hypotenuse. Which of the three trig functions should we use? Well, hopefully you figured out that we need to use cosine. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I want to figure out adjacent, I have to multiply cosine times hypotenuse. So this is going to equal 40 times cosine of 60 degrees. Now we could choose to simplify that right now, but I think for the purposes of this video, I'm going to leave that as it is right now. We don't have any acceleration in the x direction, so a x equals zero, and we've taken care of all the variables that are solely in the x direction. Okay, let's move on to the y direction. We're going to define ground level as y equals zero, a height of zero, so the ball is going to land at a height of zero and the ball was launched from a height of zero, so y equals zero and y initial equals zero, respectively. We don't know what the velocity 
of the projectile is just before impact, so we're going to leave that blank. But we do know something about the initial velocity when it is shot out of the cannon. We can use our trig again and use this triangle to figure out now what is this side. What's the magnitude of this vector right here? Well, that is the opposite side of our triangle. This is the hypotenuse, so which trig function should we use now? Well, hopefully you took a moment to figure out that that is going to be the sine function now. So in order to figure out opposite, I have to multiply sine times hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is 40 times sine of 60 degrees, and that will give me the y component of that velocity. Okay, finally, acceleration in the y direction is due to gravity, and nothing else is acting on this projectile, so we will say that that's negative g or negative 9.8 meters per square second. Okay, the one variable that the two components do share is time, but we don't know anything about time, so we're going to go ahead and leave that blank. Okay, we have all our givens identified. We have a few blanks here. So now we want to go on to the equation step, figuring out which equations actually apply to this particular problem. Uh, don't erase anything in your notes, but I have to go on to the next slide, obviously, and some things are going to shift. So let's give my software a little moment to write everything back in. This is the same stuff you just wrote down for the given step. And givens, equations, and solve. All right, so let's write down our equations for the x direction. The first one is the position equation, so x equals xi plus vxit, and then normally we see a plus one-half at squared here, right? But since acceleration in the x direction is zero, we can leave that term off. The other two equations, just like in the horizontal motion video, projectile video, excuse me, will just end up stating that the final velocity in the x-direction is equal to initial velocity in the x-direction. Since we don't have any acceleration, velocity remains constant. And that's what this says. Okay, that's the x-direction. Now let's go over to the y-direction. So let's go with our position equation for the y-direction. Now here we do have an acceleration component since we do have acceleration that's non-zero. Let's write down our velocity equation. Vy equals, or final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. And let's write our velocity squared equation. So we have final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus two times acceleration times the change in position or the displacement in the y direction. Okay, we have our three equations in y, our two equations in x, and let's figure out which ones we want to avoid. Well, we don't have any information about the final velocity in the x direction, so let's cross that out. And let's cross out any equations that involve final velocity in the x direction, which would be this one right down here. So that is not going to concern us right now. Over on the y side of things, we don't know anything about the final velocity in the y direction, so let's cross that out. And let's cross out any equations associated with that, which would be these two equations down here. There's a final velocity, final velocity squared. We're not going to want to deal with those, so let's cross those out for now. Okay, so I'm left with the position equation in x and the position equation in y. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and erase this stuff so that I can go on to the third step, which is to actually solve for what we want, which is the final position of this, um, the cannonball. Okay. So now that I have a little bit more room, let's go ahead and start plugging in what we know into this equation. And I have x equals 0 plus 40 times cosine of 60 degrees, that's my initial velocity in the x direction, times time. And when I simplify this, this times cosine of 60 degrees gives me 20. So I have an equation that says final position equals 20 times t. 
Well, I'm stuck at this point because I don't know T. But just like with the case of the horizontal uh, projectile, we have another equation that we can use over here. So let's use it. Let's use this equation to see if we can figure out what T is. So I plug in what I know into this equation and I get 0 equals 0 plus 40 times sine of 60 degrees times t plus 1 half times negative 9.8 times t squared. Um, this turns out to be something like 34.6 so when I simplify this equation I have 0 equals 34.6 times t minus 4.9 t squared. So again I got the 34.6 by multiplying 40 times sine of 60 degrees and I got the minus 4.9 by multiplying 1 half times negative 9.8. Okay well this is an equation that has t in both terms so what I can do is I can factor t out of the equation on this side so when I factor t out I have two things that I'm multiplying together this term and this term and I'm multiplying them together to get zero. Now the nice thing about when I have zero on one side of the equation is that I can get that by setting either of the two factors equal to zero. So I can say zero times anything is zero or anything times zero equals zero. So the first possibility is that this term is zero which gives me a rather boring result that t equals zero. Oops, I got a little ahead of myself there. But the second possibility for getting zero here is that if this entire thing is equal to zero, so I can write that this entire thing equals zero, and that's how I got this equation right here. Okay. Well, it turns out that when I solve this for t, I'm going to get t equals 7.06 seconds. So this projectile spends an entire amount of time of 7.0 seconds in the air before it hits that haystack, its target. Okay, now that I know time, I can work on back on the x side of things. And let's plug in t to that equation. So I get 20 times 7.06. And when I evaluate that, it turns out that I get 141 meters. So the total range of this projectile from its launch point to where it hits its target is a horizontal distance of 141 meters. So that's how you deal with projectile motion when you're launching at any angle. And you can uh, use the same process to figure out a variety of things, including time of flight, including range, and you can figure out a few other things as well. All right, physics class, I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Bye.